Hello, everybody. Welcome to Spoken History tonight. I have um, exited my office and we're going to try this in the Felker room here. Um, we're still trying to figure out the best way to do all of these hybrid programs where we have some people online and some people here at the library in the Felker room. I'm going to talk to my online friends first here. Um, if you notice, your um, cameras are off and your um, microphones are muted, and that is what's supposed to happen. Um, you'll be able to ask questions on the Q&A um, function at the bottom of your screens. You can do that at any time. We'll probably address the questions at the end of the presentation, um, but you can go ahead and do that whenever you, whenever a question pops into your head. If you have any technical problems or anything, you can put that in the chat. I'll try to watch that for you. And um, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight, especially the people here that braved the weather and uh, cold. Um, we have a wonderful speaker here tonight, um, Brad Castleberry. He is the head of archives at UW Stevens Point, and he's going to explain to you tonight um, what kind of treasures you can find in that archive there. Should go to your screen share here. There we go. All right. Well, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for having me. I always like doing these talks, uh, let people know that there's lots of resources available, how to find them, and that they're at a centralized location at UW Stevens Point. Uh, so first, I'm just going to introduce you to me. Um, my name is Brad Castleberry. Uh, I got a Bachelor of Arts degree in History from UW Stevens Point, and then I went on and got a Master's uh, from UW Milwaukee in Library Science and Archives. Uh, I've been working at the UW Stevens Point Library for 12 to 14 years. It's a little sketchy. I started there as a student. I then worked as an LTE, and then I, I went on um, to become an assistant archivist and worked my way up to, to the head of archives. Um, so I have a lot of experience with that very specific archives. Um, that's where almost all my time has been spent. So. And currently I live in Amherst, uh, about 15 minutes outside of Stevens Point. Um, I'm married, I, I have a two-year-old son who I just adore spending time with and two cats. And that, <laughs> that is me in a nutshell. <laughs> uh, so first, um, the UW Stevens Point archives is made up of three main collections. There's the university collection, of course, um, that's our primary reason for existing. We are a university archives, uh, first and foremost. Uh, we have a portion of the Portage County Historical Society's records. Um, I'd say we hold about 50% of their stuff. Um, it's fantastic local history, vertical files and photographs and this kind of stuff. Our students use it all the time for classes, uh, genealogists, of course, local historians. And then we have a portion of the Wisconsin Historical Society records, which is what I'm going to focus on tonight. Uh, because the other two are very specific to Portage County. Um, so I'm going to talk about the Area Research Center, uh, transferring materials, what kind of things are in the collection, what counties we cover, um, and all of that. So first, uh, what is an Area Research Center? Uh, this term gets thrown around a lot, and we just assume people know what it means. Um, so an Area Research Center is, it's basically, it's just the location where the Wisconsin Historical Society has designated to hold a portion of their records. So every UW campus is an Area Research Center, um, and the Great Lakes, or Northern Great Lakes Visitor Center is also one. Um, so the records are owned by the Wisconsin Historical Society but they were created in the region where they're now stored because the idea is we want people to be able to access the records where they were created. We don't wanna make everybody drive to Madison to look at it. Um, if you're from Wood County, the company from Wood County, you wanna be able to go somewhere closer than Madison to do your research. Um, what's very unique is that we can transfer records between all the area research centers. Uh, this is the only type of system I believe in the world. Um, archival records normally don't move from, from where they're sitting um, because it's, it's normally not very good for preservation um, and all that stuff. But we have a very good system set up. So researchers get to benefit from having stuff transported from Milwaukee or La Crosse to Stevens Point to make it easier for you to do research so you don't have to drive to all these different ARCs. And this is just a map, uh, the, the ARC map, color-coded. Each star is an ARC. 
um, and then the, the colored uh, counties correspond with it. Um, we're central Wisconsin there, of course, we have nine counties that we take care of. I think we're the third largest ARC as far as number of counties. Uh, so what kind of records can you find uh, through the ARC? Um, this is just kind of a general idea. I, I wanna make sure everybody understands that. So we have nine counties records, but we're not gonna have all these record types for every county. And it's not gonna be a complete run of all the records either. Just for example, um, take anything, take tax rolls, cause we we're talking about it earlier. Um, Portage County, for example, has every township just about from the 1850s up until 1990, right? But then another county might have a little sliver of 20 years only because unfortunately, these type of records get thrown away. Um, people didn't know they were supposed to save them for whatever reason. It's just something to keep in mind. So some of the records that you're gonna find are uh, court records. These are gonna be um, civil, they're going to be criminal. There's also probate records, uh, land records, including uh, the passing down of land ownership, which actually I just worked with a researcher on today. Um, vital records, which are birth, death, and marriage. Um, WHS holds the original paper copies, um, but all the ARCs have microfilm copies. Um, and what is that? I don't know what that one is that's covered up. You can move it. Just put your cursor on top of your box and then it'll slide up. School records. Actually, this is a very cool one. Um, Wood County uh, predecessor school records actually is a huge collection that we have. And we've had many researchers use it um, because the old, uh, the old way they were put together, um, the school records of Wood County leaked over into Portage County. So we have genealogists and historians always using this to track uh, family members and stuff. Uh, city and village minutes, tax rolls, naturalizations, probably one of our most heavily used resources. And of course, manuscript collections from, from individuals that have um, uh, historical records that they donate. So how do you access all these records? Um, there's a couple specific indexes that everybody should know about. Um, and then there's also kind of um, outlier indexes that local historical societies sometimes put together. Um, those I don't know as much about. I'm, I'm familiar with Portage County, as I've said. So I know the Stevens Point Area Genealogical Society had, they did um, volunteer work on our records and they index some of them and put them on their website. So there's there's outside places like that to look, of course. Um, but the Wisconsin Historical Society has um, their catalog for vital records on their website. Everybody should be familiar with that. And I do believe that's on the handout. I gave you the link to that. Um, and then also the UW-Madison Library Catalog. A lot of people think that's a little weird. Um, all the Wisconsin Historical Society records are on the Madison Library catalog. I don't really know why it's that way. I think they're connected in some way, they're working together, but everything's on there. Um, you just have to learn how to use it properly and efficiently to find what you're looking for. I'm gonna talk about that more um, very soon. And then of course, you can always fall back on asking an archivist. Um, we're more than happy to look through any index to find what you're looking for. Um, myself at, at at your ARC or any other archivist at any of the other ARCs are more than happy to help researchers. So the UW-Madison Library Catalog, um, I wanna introduce this to you. I don't know if anybody's used it to find records. Um, so this is what it looks like when you first get to the page. Um, you can just Google UW-Madison Library Catalog. Um, and there's some tricks that I want you to know, okay? Um, first, don't type anything into the, the main search bar because you're gonna get 100,000 results and you're not gonna want any of them. So first thing you do is click on the advanced search, which is located on the right side of the screen. After that, you're gonna wanna click on the mixed material 
because mixed material means archival material. Otherwise, you're going to be looking at books, magazines, videos, and you don't want to do that. Um, and the other thing I forgot, because I just went forward and I want to go back. Oh, where to put the information, the data that you're searching for. Uh, the search term, you want to put in the keyword search. You don't want to put it in the title. You don't want to put it in the authors. You want to do your searches as broad as possible. And when you search keywords, you're searching, you're searching the title, you're searching the authors, you're searching all the different topics that the librarians painfully put in there. So that's your best route um, to get the most results for your search. So I did a, a simple search. Uh, I just put in Marshfield and 60 results came back. That, that's, actually, that's actually pretty good results um, for a specific town and their records. So this is what the results page looks like. Um, you're gonna wanna click on the title of the record and that's gonna take you into the actual catalog record and give you more information. And this is what the catalog record looks like. It has a title at the top. And most importantly is about halfway down there, you see Stevens Point Area Research Center. So that's gonna tell you the location of the records. Like I said, there's, there's what is it, 13 area research centers. So that could say, I could say any one of those. It could say it's, it's down at WHS in Madison. It could say it's at La Crosse. So you wanna make sure you know where the collection is. And then this is of course going to give you uh, other relevant information like how large is the collection is this something that you want to actually trudge through um and also uh sometimes it will have on the upper right if it's a large collection it'll have finding aids um that'll either give folder lists box lists sometimes they give full name lists i was just looking at a collection today of probate files I think for Wapaka County, it actually had every single person indexed in there as a massive file. So um, look out for, for finding aids that are attached to these records. So these are some of the Marshfield specific resources that I thought were interesting. I don't know if any of you have ever looked at this, uh, but court dockets, um, you can get a wealth of information out of that. Um, we go to the I'm sure you're mostly familiar with what dockets are. They're, they're summaries of cases. Um, this is what we go to if we don't have full case files, uh, but it gives you, you know, the plaintiff, defendant, what the crime was, um, what the results were, and it'll give you dates and stuff like that. Same thing with the justice court dockets. Uh, the Rodis family papers um, actually is a very popular collection. We actually transfer that one down to Madison quite a bit for researchers. Uh, and then another lumber company record. Um, we have a lot of students that do lumber research. So anytime we have uh, collections of lumber companies. And then one that I didn't know about, and I just found when I was doing this was the Greater Marshfield Community Health Plan records. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. Maybe maybe you are. But it was the first HMO, either in Wisconsin or the country. I'm not, I don't remember. But I was like, wow, that's, that's kind of cool. I had no idea that <laughs> that happened right here. Now, this is just an example. Like I said uh, in the previous slide, there were 60 results. So, so definitely scroll through all your results to see you know, if it's anything you're looking for. Uh, and then these are some Wood County resources I found. I mentioned the predecessor school records. Um, very large collection, very complete. Uh, it's excellent for genealogy and histories of schools. Uh, the Wood Teacher County, or the Wood County Teachers College records. Uh, the criminal record, tax rolls, probate files, naturalization records, and vital records. These are all heavily used for genealogists and local historians. Um, so I wanted to make sure to highlight that Wood County specifically has these available at our ARC. And because of where you're located, I also included some of Marathon County's resources, um, naturalization records, tax rolls. Here you can see the tax rolls. Um, are from 1859 to 1980. Very, very large and complete collection. Um, case files and probate, but uh, Marathon County also has an extremely large uh, criminal and civil case file um, with the actual cases. It's a really great collection. So if you have family members that may have gotten in trouble in the past, um, 
from Marathon County, definitely, definitely contact us. And then of course, vital records, the, the pre-1907 birth, death and marriage, uh, which as you know, um, people weren't required to file, I think before September, 1907. Um, so all those are held at the um, area research centers. And then we also have access to databases. Um, this is outside of Wisconsin Historical Society stuff. This is specific library um, databases that we offer. So free access to Ancestry, free access to newspaper archive, and also digital Sanborn maps, which is kind of an underutilized resource, but it's really fantastic. Um, and I looked and Marshfield, um, Marshfield has about eight to 10 maps on there and you might have the print ones, um, most historical societies do, but it's nice to know that, that, um, that they're available digital, you know, so you can do some research on the go. Um, but unfortunately you can only use these databases on campus. So um, if you like visit our website or anything, uh, it will block you. So definitely come, come and give us a visit. And the vital records index, I alluded to this earlier. Um, I'm sure many of you have used this. Uh, best way to get there is just Google Wisconsin Historical Society and vital records in the search box and, um, and you'll get a result of every single birth, death and marriage in the state. But on the um, left side, there's limiters, which I use all the time, limited down to the county, limited down to the time period, limited down to birth, death or marriage. Um, so you're not going through 10,000 different records and do remember that it's just an index. Um, it's going to give you the very basic information of name, maybe date, I think date and, um, the real number and page. So it's only a tool to use before you come to the archive. So you're ready to do the research, uh, before you get there. Brad, do you have yep. the real of the actual records for just Wood County, the nine counties, or is it the entire state? We only have the nine counties. Nine counties. Um, but the other area research centers will transfer their counties uh, microfilm. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, as far as vital records and naturalizations, people are less um, less excited about transferring paper records, but if they are microfilmed, we can get those usually, so. Uh, and then also I wanted to give a plug to our digital collections. Um, we're constantly updating what we have online. Um, that's obviously the way the world is moving. Um, so to get there, just Google UWSP archives, digital collections. Um, and I think I have a link for this too on the handout. And on the right side, you'll see a digital, digital collections link. Um, and that's gonna take you to Preservica, which is our, um, our uh, electronic management system. And on the top there, you'll see the Area Research Center and that's gonna be um, all the Wisconsin Historical Society records that we've digitized. I'll be honest with you, there's not much on there right now, um, but we are constantly working on, it takes time, it takes money, it's, it's egregious, but um, we're getting through it little by little. So check back there often. And I also wanted to tell you about the archives because um, we've had quite a couple of years and we have quite a couple of years to come. Um, we're no longer in Albertson Hall, which if any of you visit us before uh, is where the archives was. Uh, the building is now empty and it's scheduled to be torn down in the spring. So all of us had to leave. <laughs> so we're in a temporary location. Uh, we're in the Trainer Natural Resources building, the CNR building which is actually just one building north of where the library was. So it's, it's very close. Um, and we're on the first floor, we're on room 110. Um, I also have that on your handout if you wanna come visit. Uh, but um, something important to keep in mind is we didn't have enough room for all of our collections in the natural resources building. So we have about half the stuff from the archives is nearby and accessible. So if you were to show up, we could actually help you that day. Um, and the other half is actually kept off-site in Plover, which is about a 15-minute drive one way. 
So we're asking everybody to make appointments before they come. Uh, it helps us get the materials ready, um, make sure everything's set so we're not wasting your time when you come in to do research. Um, so yeah, I just want to warn you that if you come in on a sneak attack, uh, we might not be able to help you. So just contact us ahead of time. Um, if you look on the, the back of the first page of the handout, uh, we are number nine of the ARCs. Um, and it's got our phone number and email. So you can feel free to call or email to set an appointment or to ask us questions before you come in. Um, and that would be greatly appreciated. Oh, and um, the new building isn't set to open for three to five years. So this is going to be kind of a long-term temporary situation. And that was all I had. I breeze through and I talk fast, but <laughs> if you have questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, it's, it's impossible to uh, give you a good complete idea of all the collections and everything that we have in the archives for Wood County, for example. That's why I can only give you kind of an overview and also show you how to do the search to find what you're looking for. Um, the UW-Madison catalog is really key. Uh, I urge you to go there first. Um, you can type in specific names of people you're looking for, or if you want to do just general collections, general topics, I would start there as well and um, see what comes up. And if you're looking for Wood County, if you're looking for Marathon, you know, anything our ARC, um, it will be at, at Stevens Point most likely. So hopefully that helps. <laughs> so if anybody has questions or specific questions about your research or collections you, you're interested in, I'd be more than happy to, to try and help you. I have a two part question. Okay. Um, this was fascinating, by the way. Um, and this is just kind of a strange thing. You might not know the answer to this, but are all archives the same according to like states? I mean, are they run pretty much the same? Do they have the same kind of information? Um, yes and no. Um, I'll say it is mostly the same type of information because it's it's government records, it's manuscript records, it's photographs. So at the basic level, yes. Um, of course, the information within the documents and everything is completely different. And every state's gonna have different rules on what they keep, what they don't keep. For example, tax rolls, we keep coming back to. Um, if they're heavily used, like our Portage County ones are heavily used, we keep every single year. But then other, other counties, other states, what they'll do is just keep every fifth year or every 10th year because you have cost considerations for storage and dealing with this stuff. And if it's less used, you just want a sample of, of the material. Um, and every state, to answer kind of your second part, every state, or was it your first part? I still have one, so that was <laughs> Okay, first. that's the first part. Every state is completely different. Um, Wisconsin is extremely um, progressive in how they do their archives. We were like one of the first states to establish a state archives. Um, they were they were very outgoing in in getting collections donated to the archives, like very early on in the 1800s, early 1900s. That's why WHS has um, fantastic collections from the people that got blacklisted uh, during um, communism in the 50s and in, in uh, California. Like, who would think that would be in Wisconsin? But it's because they're very active. Um, and other other states are, are I don't know, I'm not gonna say lazier, but um, I don't know, every state's different, okay. you know, as far as how much energy they put into it. And, and like I said, the transfer system itself is extremely unique. Um, Nobody else does that. Okay. The second part to my question, and this is from my own research, mm -hmm. um, I had hired someone years ago to um, specifically look for court case records or probate records that mm -hmm. I was looking for in um, Chicago, because it was just so massive. I didn't really know where to hone in on that. And um, the information I got back 
because um, it was involving a court case of suspicious death of an ancestor of mine. And the records that I got back were all probate records. And I guess I thought mm. that was all court stuff. But now I'm curious if there might be a whole other file through the dockets. There might be. Okay. Probate. And some of that, is that the difference where some of that docket information could get into the probate if it's? Absolutely. Okay. Well, probate is a court record. So I'm not surprised that they would send you that okay. if you asked for a court record. Um, but yeah, the docket. It's, is is like a summary. I kind of think of it as a cover page to a larger document, and it might give the volume number and page number or box number of where the, the full document is located. Um, and it also might be helpful um, going in for your research. Like you ask for court cases, which is a blanket. Give me it. We get that a lot. Give well, me it. And, and this was like in 1891. Right. So, I mean. And if you, if you say... Well, this was a, a crime, right? Suspicious death. Well, it was supposedly a suicide, but he was shot twice in the head. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> not easy to do. Yeah. Um, With a gun from that time period. So. Yeah, so you could you could definitely narrow it down to criminal case files. Um, but yeah, there's dockets. There's also judges' minutes. Um, okay. There's all kind. There's justice of the peace records. That's going to be more for. Um, Okay. Uh, civil stuff. Um, yeah, there's all kinds. Well, the piece of information I've been hunting for because they mentioned all this in the probate case and everything that there was a suicide note. Oh, naming the guardian to the children, and the guardian dumped him in an orphanage the second he got them <laughs> and took all the money. So I am wanting to see the suicide note. Is that something that would have been kept in a yes case? If they had maybe, that. yeah, it would have to be like in the full file, okay. the full court record. Um, I'm wondering if that wouldn't be restricted though, because a lot of times they put restrictions on anything having to do with children and placement in, in foster homes or adoption and that kind of stuff is really hard uh, to get get a hold of. Um, so it could be off yeah. to the side and restricted. I just so, know it's in a box somewhere. Yeah, you know, in some basement. <laughs> And that's why when, some building. when you when you search the catalog record, this is actually an excellent point. Um, like I said, there's criminal and probate, but use the catch-all of court record. That, that's what I do whenever I start a search. I go in with just um, Wood County Court, and you're going to get everything, like all the judges' minutes, all the random stuff you don't want. Like they have lists of judges of Wood County over the past hundred years. Like, but you you know you can go through and and pick and choose what sounds best, but Yours is a different animal because it's Chicago. It and, is, yeah. yeah. And the probate records that I got actually were the last name that I was looking for was Eggers, G G E R Z. Mm -hmm. And she found some, like, it, it was hardly even most of the letters in that name. Oh. And it still was that case. I could prove that, but they had messed up the name so bad that it just complicates it all. Another huge problem in the yeah. archives is transcribing yeah. names. Yeah. He was and... fairly famous where he came from from in Iceland. So I have his handwriting. Oh, so this is the detective in me, but I would see that suicide note. Yeah, yeah, I just don't think that's pretty right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cool. <laughs> I will say there's a lot of researchers that uh, come in to do genealogy and never rarely ask for criminal because they don't know. And I'll just kind of out of my own interest, I'll just look through the criminal case files and I'll be like, oh, did you know your great grandpa was arrested for whatever and <laughs> i don't know if they want to hear it or not but they're usually pretty interested in that stuff so th this just this just popped in my head wasn't even a question i was going to ask moonshine records you know during prohibition my great grandparents were moonshiners yeah um they went to court a couple times yes uh do you have those kind of records yeah well that'd be absolutely fun. they'd be in criminal and what's nice is in these indexes it says like uh moonshining or bastardry i think was one or um yeah i mean they list this stuff so if you're doing research on a certain type of of criminal <laughs> throughout history in a county it's it's really nice to to be able to do that that's interesting okay yeah <laughs> and also uh, on a side note when you first said that um the the city or or county records the minutes and stuff um, a lot of times that kind of stuff's in there too, because they, they would deal with it like through the police department and stuff. And Hey, we need to hire more 
people to fight. I mean, I don't know if it was that big of a problem in the woods of Wood County, but <laughs> they do mention that kind of stuff. It would be interesting that the police chief was the son-in-law of, oh, of one of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you get away with it. <laughs> no, he was arrested. No, really? <laughs> Do you have a question? Yeah, what do you find out about the internment camps from World War II? Mm, um, that wouldn't be us. Uh, that would be National Archives. And they also have, have a fantastic catalog. Um, I would start there. Uh, they're going to have a lot of digital information, too. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff digitized. And also the Library of Congress. Um, would have a lot of stuff digitized. Um, but I believe any actual paper records on that is gonna be probably started in Washington, DC, instead of like one of their field offices like in Chicago. So you'd have to do some traveling, I'm guessing, or yeah. But I would, I would definitely try one of their um, indexes online. I've got somebody online, Rebecca. Okay. Mm -hmm. asks what kind of information is in school records um the teacher's name all the pupils names um sometimes their grades you're going to get the teacher's teaching certificate which is interesting um and then of course uh the school they're in which is is actually can be very helpful because they all had um, they all had numbers, right? Like District Five or whatever. But then they also have the nickname that goes along with it. So we'll get researchers that ask, "I'm looking for Garfield School, and like, what that? Like, where is that?" So yeah, that kind of information can be helpful um, when doing the detective work. Um, that's probably most of it. Uh, it. They're they're most what I've used them for the most is genealogy and tracing families. Um, through a town like this brother and sister were in this town at this time and we know it because it's in the school record so are right, usually there a photo with that too no or, um, just no okay. yeah it's just um information do they have attendance yes yes in attendance and there's also there's also district summaries too in some of the it's been a long time since i've looked at this to be honest with you but there's district summaries so you're going to get you might get, um, we're going to be closed for um, pulling potatoes these weeks, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know what they call them, farm holidays or something, um, or harvest holidays. Um, if there was a pandemic that went through, if there was scarlet fever, oh, hey, look, 90% um, of the people didn't come in this, this week. So, yeah, I mean, it can be used for a lot of things. You have to be creative. Um, and that's kind of tricky sometimes, but that's what researchers are all about, right? Is being detectives and finding new, new ways to use information. So anything else? Yeah. So I have a question in the way of how, what do I need to do? What, what is the process of all this? Cause I've never... Yeah never dealt with a research area, an area research center before. Okay. So what am I doing? I have to find the information first? You certainly don't have to. Asking you? No, you, no, no, you don't have to. Okay. That's a way to kind of start your research. Um, let's say, for example, you're doing genealogy. Mm -hmm. That's what you're interested in. You know you're, the family you're looking for is from Wood County. So the index is just to get an idea of what kind of records we have and if they're actually there. Okay. So you're like, oh, they have naturalization records. That's great. That's as far as, I mean, you don't even have to go that far if you don't want to, okay. but it's great if for you to know what's there, but you don't have to do any of that. Okay. We get people all the time that just call and say, I want to come in and do research for Wood County genealogy. And then we'll start a reference interview from there and say, what's the name of the people you're looking for? Um, what kind of records are you interested in? 
we might ask if you've already done some research because a lot of people have already done ancestry uh, or family search before they come in and find out what you've already found so having the the links to the indexes in that is really just to save you time because you could come in and say um i want to look at volume volume three of certification certificates of naturalization but you don't have to do that at all okay. no yeah um if you if you want stuff transferred because you find it in the in the in the catalog you can you can just call us and because we have to we have to still ask for it so you still have to work with us um to get it there and we'll take care of all that for you you don't have to worry about that but um yeah some people are there's very different researchers um there's people that are very hands-off and they know they want to find something but they don't know how to do it we get we get that all the time they just come in and we're more than happy to help um but then there's people that they kind of want to take it on their own and do their own research and dig in. And these are just tips if if people want to do that on their own, but you certainly don't have to. So if I say, for instance, I am interested in naturalization mm -hmm. and I say, well, I don't I know this relative and they were born and they died and they I don't know when they came to America. That's fine. Uh, I can't find anything in the indexes, for instance. You know, I right. can't, for some reason, can't figure that out. You would help me and say, yeah. I, I believe I have some information on this person. Yeah. And then I would come down there to you and look what you have found. Yes. Because uh, actually, the naturalizations is a good example. Um, a lot of our naturalizations only have a card index. It's mm -hmm. not digitized. It's not online. So you call us up and say, I'm looking for John Smith from Wood County. We go to our card index and say, oh, there's 17 of them because his name's John Smith. Yes. And, then, yes. and, then, and then you can decide you want to come in or do you want to pay us $15? We'll scan it okay. and email it to you. Right. There's okay. also that option. Um, I didn't even talk about no, fees and I probably should. Okay. If you, if you come in, it's a bargain. It's 10 cents a copy okay. and it's $1 a page for anything bound, which is the naturalizations okay. are in those big volumes. So we have to take extra care. So those are a dollar. Um, that's pretty much it for fees. Mm -hmm. um, if we scan photos for you, that might be a dollar a photo, but genealogists rarely have photos. It's usually just documents. Um, if you save stuff to your flash drive, it costs you nothing because we're not doing anything. Okay. So you can bring in your own flash drive, scan documents and, and take it home that way. You can also take pictures with your phone. Um, the only thing you can't take pictures of is vital records. Uh, there's still a state law covering those. Um, forever vital records yeah and no matter how far yeah. you've gone back yeah but we we can stamp them that's it's not a, an official record so we can print it out stamp it we can also oh, I see. we can also scan it and give it a watermark that says and we're good to go you just can't take a picture um just the plain document um but fees for like research um if you call up and say i'm looking for I want all the information you have on John. Uh, it starts out with a $20 basic research fee, which is off the bat because it's gonna take more than an hour <laughs> for us to even get started. Um, and then a naturalization is $15, an obituary is $5. Um, if you have more extensive probate and court records are sometimes 70 pages. So if you're asking if you're asking for anything and everything, what we'll do is see what we have and call you back, basically, and then we'll get an invoice because it can it can add up quickly. Um, because if you have a 70 page probate, it's 10 cents a page, $20 for the research. Um, so we do itemize an invoice. We're not ripping anybody off. But yeah, you can do everything over the phone and through email if you want and just send us a check. You can come in. And do the research if you want to look at old dusty books either way we're more than happy
it's usually a good deal. Some of that information you get is pretty priceless. Yeah. Right now we have a woman from Arizona, I think, doing research and we found so much stuff today. It was just, it was a really, really good. She found stuff that in all types of records that she wasn't expecting. And a lot of it was in the court records actually. So you never know what you're going to find and where you're going to find it. Yeah. If I'm looking for something from, from Clark County, mm -hmm. would I be better off to go directly to the courthouse in Clark County or come to you? Uh, Clark County is not us. Oh. Yeah. That's yeah, that's Eau Claire. So oh, okay. you could either call Eau Claire. Um, I don't want to be mean to courthouses, but a lot of times they're not extremely keen on helping genealogists. So I would say contact the archivist first at Eau Claire, and they can find out if they have the records or not. Um, and like, if you're looking for old court records and and the ARC doesn't have it or they're not sitting in Madison. Um, I don't see the Eau Claire. Um, that is Greg, number 10. And he's a great guy. He'd be more than happy to help you. So, I have another online question. Okay. From Rebecca, again, um, did children have to be naturalized when they came to the U.S.? No, mm -hmm. and neither did wives. Mm -hmm. um, and it's mm -hmm. yeah, it's just the men. But there was. A law wasn't there that came through in the twenties or something yeah. about it the changed. wives that had married. They were somebody was American. Was the wife American, and they married uh, an immigrant or something like that? I can't. Remember yeah, I'm not exactly sure either. What it was. Yeah, if they come, they lost their citizenship, yeah. so they had to re. Yeah. Yes, they had to do. They had to go to the, the county or wherever, and and the the wife. It was usually the wife that was involved, wasn't it? And you had to get uh, a citizenship then. Yeah, and talking about differences of information on on records, sometimes these naturalization forms will give the name and birth date of every single child that came over on the ship, and then sometimes you get an X that says, yeah, I, I agree to be a U.S. citizen and they're most useless and frustrating. One of the best things at the regional archives are the naturalization records. Yeah. The counties, the, you have the final papers and so it gives all the information. Yeah. Sometimes it also includes the town where they immigrated from, not yeah. just the country, but the actual village. And, and that's something everybody looks for is what was the name of the community that they came from in the old country? Yes. Well, there's one one paper that I think is the intention of, yes. of yeah. becoming a citizen, and that has a lot of information. I believe that's what you may be talking the about. First papers usually are just, I, I want to be, become a citizen, and they'll find their name, and that's it. Okay. The first papers aren't as good as the final paper. Well, oh. and I will interject and say every county was different because it wasn't standardized. So every county could oh. do whatever they wanted back then. So some of them are rich, at, you know, yeah. all the way declaration, petition, and final. Yes. But some of them I've seen is literally just their name written yeah. and the date, and you get oh. nothing else out of it. Yeah. They yeah. have that card I, I've yeah. seen on uh, family search, yes. where just the card, and then sometimes it, it helps you because the witnesses there'll be two witnesses, yeah. and you'll recognize the names. So it'll be like a family member. City. Yes, yes. A family member. Yep. And then you say, all right, I've got the right one. Yep. Or the farmer that lived down the road is vouching for him. Yep. Yeah. And the other thing about those records, it's nice to go through them page by page because what you'll catch is uh, it looks like a group of people from Marshfield got in a car and went to Wisconsin Rapids mm -hmm. to finish their papers because they're all Marshfield and mm -hmm. in a row at the yeah. same time completing that form. Yep. So. Back, I want to just ask one question on these yet. There's a state law that says that tax records and municipal records are supposed to be offered in the State Historical Society before they're tossed. Right. Okay. If the State Historical Society decides that they're going to take one in 10 copies or one in yeah. 10 years, 
and those other books are distributed somewhere else. Yeah. Does it help to have the regional archives or the state archives know where the other copies are existing? Yes. So you, you I would want to know. Yep. So if you if we would prepare a list or an inventory of what we have, that would help you for absolutely our counties. Yep. Because we I I don't remember what county it is, but it, we we have like 1950 through 1980 so it's almost useless nobody really looks at 1960 as history right so if i knew that 1860 through 1950 were somewhere else i know researchers would want to be directed Here. into that yes absolutely so yeah keep us in mind for all that stuff <laughs> How do I find these local newspapers? Where where do I look for that? You say possibly you might yep. have that. Yeah, we have we have them on microfilm. We have the Stevens Point Journal and Gazette and the Lumberman. So basically, the Portage County newspapers we have all on microfilm in our archives. But we also have access through newspaper archive to more newspapers. Yeah. Okay. Um, on. Well, and our library would have um, like the Wausau paper, for example, or I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know what newspaper it's Marshfield, yeah. Marsh. but um, yeah, our library might have that. Um, that's more of a library thing than an archives thing sometimes. Well, the newspapers, um, <clears throat> Badger Link, Wisconsin Public. Yeah, if you're going through your public library, you can get, you can get to lots of newspapers yeah. from the state. The problem is that the version that they provide to the libraries does not include the Gannett papers, which includes Wausau, Stevens Point, and yep. Marshfield. Mm -hmm. You have to have the subscription for that. Uh, Marshfield Public Library has a special collection of Wisconsin newspapers on their website uh, that you can use either here in the library or at home if you sign in with your library card, a library card that includes five or six cities in Wisconsin. Marshfield is one of them. Green Bay is another. I don't remember them all, but mm -hmm. that would be an option too. And mm -hmm. the Wisconsin Historical Society has the largest collection in the state, of course, and we can request those. Um, we actually have two students right now doing research on New London newspapers that we got from WHS. So they they lend newspapers. So if you're looking for for a small town or obscure one, we might be able to get it. Oh God, the Wisconsin. Historical Society, yep. possibly. Yes. Okay. And I, I do want to say, um, WHS can do almost everything we can do. They have, some, like, the stuff we have microfilmed, they also have down there. Um, but you're going to pay a lot more to go through WHS. Just a heads up. <laughs> so come to your local ARC, and it'll be faster and cheaper. You have maps and atlases. Does that include plat books? Yes. Yep. What years, or you don't have a? Uh, you probably don't know. Is it off the top of my head? I don't. They're in the. They're in our library catalog, um, UWSP's library catalog. Okay. So if you go, just Google that, and and you can search for Wood County Plat, and they'll all come up all the years. Okay. Yep. We actually have a pretty good plat collection. We have we have them for the whole state, um, but older eighteen hundred ones for our nine counties. So okay. And if you're then just, I got to put a plug in the Marshfield Library. Yeah. We have um, Marathon Clark and Wood County here. So if it's something local, there's a yeah. good collection okay. right here. All right. Well, you're plugging the library. Um, if you're just beginning a lot of research on your family, um, we do subscribe to Ancestry, the, the library edition. So you'd have to use it um, in here. You could come in here and we could get you set up and looking on Ancestry for, for, for some of your relatives. If I have a library card, you don't you have know, to have one to use okay. it. Yeah, we'll get you on. And Ancestry, the last couple of years has been putting a lot more stuff on. Yeah. It's really been blowing up. So we bought a lot of stuff yeah. that was free. At yeah. one point, you could get a lot of that off the internet, and now you can. It's bought up by Ancestry, I think. Yeah. And we we also I do interlibrary loan here, and um, if you're looking for a microfilm on a certain newspaper, I can try to get that for you. Have it. Yeah, and that it would, it would come from the same place we're getting it from. Yeah. yeah. 
and any of us here can help you get started on all of that stuff. Yep. So, and actually the two computers over here, they're actually used for um, getting on Ancestry and things. So you'd have your own uh, desk space and things like that. We try to make it a little more um, convenient for people who are doing their genealogy research and things. So very good, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of resources out there for genealogists. It's it's a lot better than it was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> I often say this is my favorite room in the library. Um, it's just, it's got so much information that you have no idea. It reaches much farther than Marshfield. <laughs> Anything else? I'm going to put one more plug in for Brad. I've gone <laughs> over to see Brad lots of times. He is always very helpful. No matter what question you have, you pull up his computer and see if this is the record we have and yep. go get it for you. So um, I've been called tenacious. So <laughs> I keep going until I find something for you. So, so I have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. that possibly, I don't know, it would be more of a church record of some sort, possibly, mm -hmm. where you know there's an ancestor, but you have no idea where they were buried. Um, mm. Of course, there is find a grave, right. which I use a lot. So I'm get, and then people say they can't find the records or what is, I suppose maybe the church burned down, took the records with it. I don't, how else can you find these people? Where they um, possibly... Hmm. That's a tough one. <laughs> the diocese or something because my father was married first time and and his wife didn't have any children, but I was from the second marriage and I went to the to the because uh, the library, what is it, man sexton? I oh yeah, the, yep. Sexton at the cemetery and he found big one. Yeah, those those people do really good work. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> if you if you know it's an operational um <laughs> place with a an active but there's a lot of cemeteries that are left in disrepair and you know overgrown i will say unfortunately that we come we find a lot of dead ends in our research too um it's unavoidable the records just don't exist. Um, I've spent days and days just looking for like one birth date <laughs> and it it's just not there. Um, so that's something you got to expect. It's frustrating because you feel like there's got to be a record somewhere, but um, it's something you run into, unfortunately. I would say to keep trying to because like, 10 years down the road, yes. it could be digitized somewhere. Right, don't forget it. Yeah. Um, or if someone else dies that's in the obituary, yep. talks about the family plots, you know, things like that. Or like I was talking about finding stuff in weird collections that you wouldn't have thought of. Um, all of a sudden you could come across and say, oh, maybe that's, you know, a place to look I didn't think of, so. Well, yeah. there was an incident where there was a family member that I could not, I just couldn't find Mm -hmm. And on find a grave, someone gave me the clue that at one point they had a SKI on the end of their name. Yeah, name changes is a big problem. And they took the SKI off yep. and then changed a few letters to make it a different. Then I could find something. Yep. It was yes, of course. Then it's Eureka, you know, type moment. But. Yeah, and and I come across a lot of transcription errors. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, that penmanship is just awful. No matter how much I work with it, I it's, I still pull out my hair. It's and be sure to like name this. all of your kids, <laughs> their parents and grandfathers. Oh, yeah. First names. Everybody's so Johan, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. What is the point of spending the most interesting time with person you've hunted down or found or in the most unusual circumstances? Wow. I have never thought of that. That's a good question. <laughs> I don't have, um, I'll tell you that an artifact um, that I stumbled across was Vicksburg newspaper during the Civil War. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a historian, so I'll get this wrong, but there's a siege in Vicksburg. They couldn't print the newspaper. 
the North took over and printed it on the back of wallpaper. I we have one of those original newspapers in the archives, and we spent months verifying that it was original because it was also put out as a promotional nationalism piece, you know, later on. But we have an, an authentic original, and there's only like six or seven, I think, identified and. Yeah, that's exciting to have stuff like that. When I lived in a little town, there was something on the wallpaper, and on the back of the uh, the wallpaper was newspaper. Oh, and it was from um, it was Miss Clara Barton. Oh, was at the, yeah. The Civil War. Civil, Civil War. Yeah. Yep. Articles. So I suppose they used this insulation. Yeah. Ones. Yeah. And the articles in there, uh, it was amazing to see that all, you know, I'm pulling it off and my dining room table is filling up with, you know. <laughs> These old newspapers. newspapers. Yeah. 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 I live in an old house too. And every time we like remodel something, I'm like, there's got to be a diary hidden in this wall. <laughs> but nothing yet. <laughs> no money. Either. No money. No money. No, no gold coins. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, say, yeah. You know, you know, <laughs> there's good and there's bad, that's for sure. <laughs> Don't say a word, just put them someplace. Yeah, put them in the backyard. Yeah, thank you for all the great questions. Thanks. <clears throat> up here and tell everybody when the next one is. Thank you, Brad. It's wonderful. Um, next spoken history next month will be November 10th, and it's going to be Keith Meacham, and it's going to be the life and times of Engine 2442 that's sitting down by the zoo there. So it should be really interesting, and it'll be um, in person and online again. So He does a great job. He does. He does. Yep, yep. So thank you for coming tonight. And thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's much quicker now that we went to It's actually a really nice show. It is. <laughs> I got to film it all. Look at, look at the trees changing color. And, it's, if you're just getting started and you get stuck, oh, you're not. Yeah. I got 20, so yeah, I think they're back. Yeah. I'm here on Tuesday to help people from 10 to 2 usually. Yeah. So I'm oh I'm 